Hey everyone, today we are looking at slope and we are going to find the slope of a graphed line. So let's talk about slope a little bit. Yesterday we learned about the different directions of slope, positive, negative, zero, or undefined. Today we're also going to add in looking at exactly how steep that line is. Um, this steepness or slope is also referred to as rate of change. So if you hear someone talking about rate of change, they're also talking about slope. And this change remains constant between any two points on a line, which means you can use any two points to find the slope. So here is how you find the slope. We use something called rise over run. You will be hearing that a lot. To find the rise over the run or the slope, we are going to draw a right triangle between any two points on the line. And then we will count the vertical change, which is known as the rise, and divide it by the horizontal change, which is known as the run. And then we call it rise over run. And then if we need to simplify the fraction, we'll do that as well. Um, and slope, eventually we're gonna be writing an equation with it. And the equation has m to represent slope. So you'll see us put m equals for slope on here. Okay, so let's practice this a little bit with this one. So the rise is the vertical change, the up and down change, and then the run is the horizontal change, the left and right change between two points. So remember it said I need to find two points and draw a triangle. So what you want to do is find two points that go through perfect corners. So like this point would not be a good point because that is not going through perfect corners. This point, however, is going through the corners on the grid. So that would be a great point to use. And then I see another part of the line that's going through perfect corners. So I have my two points. Now I'm gonna draw a right triangle. I like to draw it above the line. You could also draw it below the line. It does not matter. Okay, now I'm going to count the rise or the vertical change. I'm just counting the up and down part of my slope triangle. And I go up, one, two. So the rise is two. And then the run, I'm just counting the horizontal part of the triangle. So one, two, three. And then remember, slope is rise divided by run. So my slope is two, thirds. And I don't need to simplify that any further. So two thirds is my slope. Um, and then one more thing we need to check is the line positive or negative. This was a positive line. So I don't need to add in a negative sign there. Okay, let's practice finding the slope of each of these lines now. So we want to look for two perfect points, draw our slope triangle and count the rise over the run. So this first one, our line is positive. I won't need to add a negative sign. And I see a perfect point here and I see another one here. And now I'm gonna draw my slope triangle. And the rise is one, two, three. And the run is two. So my slope is three over two. Okay, let's look at number two. This time my line is going down, so I'm going to need a negative sign. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that so I don't forget it. It's really easy to forget that, unfortunately. And the rest of the process is gonna be the same. I looked for two perfect points. I see a point going through a corner there and one right there. And then I'm gonna draw my right slope triangle. And this time my rise is just one over and my run is one, two, three, four. So the slope of this line is negative one fourth. Okay, number three, I have a positive line and I see a perfect point here and here. I'm gonna draw my slope triangle. The rise is one, two, three. And the run is one. And remember, we want to simplify when possible. So three over one, that is more simply written as three. So our slope here is three. 
Okay, number four, the graph looks a little bit different. My X and Y axis are still counting by one, so it's gonna be the same process. I need to look for perfect points. So I see a point going through a corner there, and the next corner I see is here. Okay, before I draw my slope triangle, I'm gonna put my negative sign because this is a negative slope. And now let's draw the triangle. And the rise is one, two, three, four. And the run is one, two, three. So the slope is negative four thirds. We are not going to change that to a mixed number because slope is rise over run. And if we changed that to negative one and one third, that's a little bit harder to tell what the rise was than just putting negative four on the top of the fraction. So improper fractions is what we're gonna use for slope. Okay, number five, I have a positive line this time. And I see a perfect point here. And I see another one here. I'm gonna draw my slope triangle. And the rise is one, two, three, four, five. And the run is two. So the slope is five halves. Again, we're gonna keep that as an improper fraction. Okay, number six, before we do anything on this one, we need to notice something that is different. Our y-axis is counting by twos. So whenever I count my rise, I'm gonna have to count by twos. The rest of the process is still the same. I'm gonna find two perfect points and I'm gonna draw my slope triangle. Okay, I'm only going up one space for my rise, but I'm going from negative four to negative two, which is two. Remember, we're counting by twos for the rise. And then my x-axis is still counting by ones. So I'm gonna count it one, two, three, four. So the slope is two fourths, which simplifies to one half. Okay, number seven, same thing. My y-axis is counting by twos, so I need to be careful whenever I'm counting the rise. And this is also a negative line, so I'm gonna make sure to put the negative sign. All right, I see a perfect point here and here. I'm gonna draw my slope triangle. I can tell that the rise is three spaces, but remember I have to count by twos because of the scale. So the rise is really two, four, six. And then the run, the x-axis is still counting by ones, so it's one, two spaces. So my slope is negative six divided by two, and negative six divided by two is negative three. Okay, next one, my x-axis is counting by ones, but look at the y-axis. This time it's counting by fives. So that will make a difference when I am counting the rise. This one, it is going through a perfect point each time. So I'm gonna draw this small slope triangle right here between these two points. And my rise is just one space, but remember we're counting by fives. So it's really five. And then the run is one. So this was a negative line, the rise was five, the run was one, and negative five divided by one simplifies to negative five. Okay, let's look at this last one. My x-axis is counting by ones, but again, my y-axis is counting by fives. So I'm gonna have to do that whenever I find my rise, I'm gonna have to count by fives. So I see two perfect points here and here. You could use any two points on the line. You could use these two up here or these two far apart. I'm just gonna use these two right here. And my rise is two spaces, which is five, 10 for the rise. And then the run is just one since the x-axis is counting by ones. So it's 10 over one. And last thing I want to show you is that it really does not matter what two points you use on the line to find the slope. So I could use this point here and this one right here, and let's draw this slope triangle. 
and I'm going to count by fives. So 5, 10, 15, 20. And then the run is 2. So my slope would be 20 over 2, which is also 10. Forgot to say this one simplifies to 10. So it does not matter what two points you use. In general, if you use two points that are closer together, there's less simplifying, but you can use any two points on the line and it will still simplify to the same slope.